Hi everyone, Dick Hirsch, blogger, mentor, and I'm going to be uh, attending the SAFAN next week, and there's probably going to be some interesting news about the SAP's cloud strategy, so I wanted to sort of maybe give my preview of what I would hope SAP would talk about, um, and I've taken a little bit of a different approach this time. Um, I want to talk about the, the HANA application cloud, um, and I basically named this the slide presentation, um, Understanding the HANA application cloud, or how I learned to love SAP's black blo black box in the cloud. So let's get started. So usually when we talk about um, SAP's cloud strategy, um, the usual approach is to look at the two um, platform as services, um, the ABAP, app, the, the Java, maybe at the Sapphire they come up with uh, new names. Um, and you have HANA down below both platforms you know these are just very simplistic architectural pictures which sort of um, y are used to give my interpretation of SAP's cloud strategy you have applications which run on the the ABAP stack and applications which run on the uh, Java stack um, the uh, actual access to HANA is indirect through the the both platform as a services so recently, there were some um, exciting announcements from Streamwork, for example, where now you can do collaborative analytics. Um, that would be interesting. But what was more interesting was the fact that you could load the information from hand in the cloud. And I started thinking about this, and I wanted to return to the hand application cloud, which I had looked at after the last Sapphire. And I thought it was an interesting um, development because it showed that the HANA application cloud, although it's been in private beta now, I think since last year, um, it was progressing and it was evolving. So I want to take a look at the SAP HANA application cloud and use this to have a more general um, analysis of SAP's cloud strategy. So this is where you see that it says import from SAP HANA, basically with a collaborative analysis users can use the data which is stored in the SAP um, the, the HANA cloud. How that how things such as multi-tenancy um, are dealt with I haven't been able to find anything. And the use of um, HANA in applications which aren't based in the two platform as services that has a it has a history for example there already is um, the BI on demand, which was I think sometime last year, moved to support HANA for some use cases. Interesting. So things were moving beyond the use of HANA in the the various platform as a services. If you look at sort of an architectural um, picture, this you would see here that you now have Streamwork and um, BI on demand accessing HANA. I want to leave out all the the nitty gritties at this point, but you see that there's there's an there's an evolution in terms of how HANA is being used in the cloud. In the meantime, other applications have emerged as well, which have been using the HANA in the cloud. The first one is Recalls Plus. It was an application which is a mobile app which enables people to look at recalls, um, which are being um, which are being announced by various manufacturers, for example. And this is the other one is a new one, which is sales and operations planning, which is I think just been released last month or so. And this is another application which is based on um, data coming from the HANA in the cloud. Another application is Sharita, Sharitra, which is um, an application which enables people to deal with um, charities and providing services to these activities to these charitable activities. And what you see here is that the the previous idea that HANA would be in the cloud just via the the, the platform as service, the Java and the ABAP, app, that's changing. So this is actually nothing nothing new. Um, you have this is a, a slide that came from a presentation um, during uh, the recent um, virtual and Cloud Week from SAP. And this shows that there you have HANA in the, the cloud, the on-demand landscape. And you see that HANA can support um, software as a service and platform as a service applications. Both are, are, are supported. So this is more or less showing that the, the um, both can be um, supported via this landscape. 
So what was interesting was when we started looking at the architecture for the sales and operations planning application. This was a little bit intriguing. What was intriguing here was the fact that you have a lean Java server. Um, and then I started to think, okay, um, you starting seeing similarities here be, or possibilities between moving this application, for example, from an independent lean Java server to the, the, the Neo platform, which is the Java platform as a service. Basically what would happen there, because most of these applications um, are, or many of these are Java based, the ideal thing, my first um, thought would be, great, move all these to the to Neo. Then you would have um, everything together, um, everything would be in one place, the architecture would be very simplistic. But then I read another presentation from the SAP Virtual and Cloud Week about the HANA application cloud. And we had heard about this last year, like I said, but what was intriguing here was that this was more than just um, a simple application. This was uh, a, an environment that supported multiple applications. Okay, here you have up top, you have the sales planning application and various other applications. Um, and then you have on the right, you have the shared cloud services. And this was intriguing. Um, my first thought was, wow, is this a new platform as a service? And if you look at the the definition of the HANA app application cloud, which I got from, this is um, an FAQ, which is on the Experience HANA site. Um, it gives you, it says that it's an on-demand application environment. It doesn't say it's a platform, but it says that it's a, it's a single environment, okay? And what is intriguing is that this is not just for one application, this is for multiple applications. Okay, so this is the first thing I thought about. Wow. Okay, this is going to be a new platform as a service, okay, that will arise um, aside the two existing platform as a services. But then I stopped and I looked at it again and I began to understand that it's not really a platform as a service that's emerging. What's more likely is that it is what I'm calling a, a cloud pattern. Okay, it's a pattern for um, applications which run in as a as a service. Okay, this isn't this doesn't mean that there's a new um, platform as a service coming out. Rather, these are applications which are similar to one another in how they're implemented, but that doesn't mean that they are based on a um, as a platform as a service. And I think this is an interesting realization because um, I always I think I think many people try and place all um, the applications which are coming out from SAP in the cloud they try and put them immediately to one of the existing platform as a service and to tell you the truth I don't think that's necessary um, and I think um, probably the best thing is to provide SAP with the opportunity to be flexible and if they want to have an application for example portal on demand on Neo great but it's not necessary. So, but the one thing that I think we do have to realize is that there appears to be um, a division between these applications, be, be between the various people that are involved. Um, in the one side, you really have the, the HANA team, okay? And, and these are things, um, they have a certain approach in how they do applications, okay? Then you have what I would call the, the existing cloud team. Okay, and these teams, in my opinion, have to work more closely together because right now I have the feeling that they're working independently of one another. Of course, yeah, the everyone's saying cloud's important, both teams, that the messages are the same. But for example, the whole idea of the, the, the HANA application cloud, as I said in a blog last year, the relationship of this design pattern to the existing cloud strategy is still very weak, and this makes things... Um, for customers, confusing. So, because what are we really talking about here, okay? For the customers of these applications, they, the main thing for them are the applications themselves. Um, 
are they easy to use? Are they, um, in terms of the, the cost involved, are they efficient? Um, can I use information from one environment to, to the other? What platform these applications are running on? Um, if they're running on Neo, if they're running on the HANA application cloud, are really, um, I would say for most customers, irrelevant. Um, the technology that's behind these applications isn't really important. The main thing is that they meet the business requirements for the users. And I think this flexibility is critical when we look at how success factors is going to be integrated into these offerings. Um, I really think that we should avoid trying to move, at least in the short term, moving these applications to existing um, existing platforms as a service. I mean, I think you have to look at it from the customer perspective. These applications are running well, um, and actually where they're running um, is for most customers irrelevant. But I think what's the most important thing and what I am hoping to see at the Sapphire is that this unified perspective, perhaps at an application level, um, is stressed because that is I think what is missing at this point. Um, of course there will be synergies between these various applications, between the technologies involved, but the main thing is from the customer side to to see this unified strategy, um, unified goals for all teams involved. It doesn't matter whether um, an application is running in the HAN application cloud or on Neom, there has to be some sort of a um, overlapping um, overlapping structure that brings all these things together. Okay, that's it. I will be reporting from the Sapphire and let's see what SAP tells us at this event. Okay, great, thanks.